Music. No, it's showing me all the your orchids. What they're doing. Okay, everybody. So um, now it looks like we've had enough time for um, everyone from the waiting room to be able to enter. I see that people are starting to throw some questions into the chat box. Uh, something I can share with you right now is that uh, if you have a question and you have your uh, camera on, your computer, it's okay to have your orchid with you and show it on camera while asking your question. Um, but uh, thanks for taking the time to watch that short video. It was actually something that our speaker today was going to talk through, but it helped me out to have a little video to keep everyone busy while I got things settled in. Uh, and now that we are settled in, I just want to introduce our speaker, uh, our orchid doctor for today, and it's Marcel from Just Add Ice. So I'm going to spotlight him to make sure that you can see and hear him. Let's see. There you go. All right, take it away. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Marcel. I'm very excited to uh, be with you uh, here at Just That Ice Greenhouse uh, with all the beautiful orchids. Today, we're going to answer some questions, provide some feedback on uh, how we grow orchids here and in the journey uh, from here to, to your house and what's all the way home there. Um, and I'll start off with that, and, and, and after, maybe in between as well, uh, there's time to uh, answer questions, I'm sure there are. Um, so let's start with uh, 
how do we grow orchids? And what's the background of an orchid? An orchid uh, in nature is an um, which means it grows in trees and plants the roots around the trunks of the trees. And so it's not growing in the soil. But to survive, orchid is a special mechanism um, to do that. Um, orchid. You're fading in and out a little bit. Okay. So let's try this mic. I'll yep. plug it in. Thanks everyone for letting us know that in the comments. Also, just to let you know, there's there's four questions so far, um, and people will be able to add as many as they want to there. That's how I'll know who's first, second, and third. And you'll see something um, show up on your screen that says that I'm requesting for you to uh, unmute yourself when it's your turn. Okay, I hope this is better. Um, okay, try again. I hope this is better. Yeah. You can hear me? Okay, great. And it's a bit, there's some uh, background noise because um, we're in the greenhouse, uh, equipment is running, plants are growing, although we can hear that, but uh, uh, there's some background noise. So let me know if uh, anything isn't clear. Um, so I was saying in nature, um, our is growing and, and we're trying to, and to do that in the greenhouse as well. Um, we need uh, sophisticated uh, equipment and greenhouses to grow a tropical plant here in Ohio. Um, and as you can see in the background, uh, we have glass greenhouses, there's grow lights, there's humidification to keep humidity at a good level, there are heating pipes uh, to keep the temperature up. And um, I'm going to explain a little bit more about how long that takes and what all phases are involved. Uh, and, and that's starting from the start. Um, so as orchids and Phalaenopsis orchids became uh, more and more popular, um, breeders and uh, started to breed with uh, orchids. The best way you can do that with seedlings, so crossing two varieties, a white and a purple one, and you get all kinds of colors. Um, but as we, what we do here in a, in a mass uh, production, you want to have some consistency and you want to be able to predict what you produce. So what they uh, then found is that if you um, do it from tissue culture, which basically means uh, cloning a plant, so you get a, a, a similar plant with the similar specifics, um, that works much better for uh, commercial growing. Um, and that's what we do today. So um, we don't do it ourselves, but uh, we have suppliers and they have labs where they do that, that work. They have a mother stock, or how we call that, where they harvest tissue off. And it's really small tissue, it's really specialized work. And that tissue they put in agar, and this is, a, this is how we receive it. Um, but before it's this big, although it's still a small plant, there are 25 plants in here. Um, and the plants are this big when we receive them. Um, they've been, this plant has been through five phases already. So they, they harvest from the mother stock, they put it in agar, it starts to grow, then they split it again as, as those clumps of cells are growing, split it again, and then uh, once it's good enough, they let it grow in, in three more phases. And this is what we call phase five and, and ready for the lab to ship to the growers. Uh, like what we do. Um, so we receive those plants and that's after like half a year of growing in the lab. So this plant is already half a year old and it's still small. So an organ is a small grown crop. And the reason for that is that like I was saying, it's growing in nature, not in soil, but on trees. So there's not much buffer on, on uh, if it doesn't rain, it will dry out. So to prevent that, um, all plants have stomata where they uh, evaporate through, like what we do with sweating to cool ourselves. Plants do that by evaporation. Um, if an orchid would evaporate during day, it would dry out because it might not have water that day. It might not rain that day. Uh, so what it does, real smart, it closes the stomata. But if it, during day, a plant uptakes CO2 to grow. That's, that's one of the most important uh, nutrients to grow. Uh, with light and CO2 and water, we have photosynthesis. And, um, but they can't uptake the CO2 during the day because they're closed to stomata to protect themselves. 
what they've what the plants found on that is they open it during night uptake the co2 during night store it and they use it during day it's really smart but it's really not efficient and um but they are able to survive in that way and that's the main reason for the, uh, the not efficient process they use that they grow so slow uh, versus a lot of other crops that just grow quickly um and to in to indicate how slow that is, um, uh, this one is already six, mo six months old. Um, we receive this plant and we transplant in them into blocks. Uh, they're glue blocks from uh, peat and cocoa. And we transplant them in, there, in here like this. And that's the start, how we start. Um, from this, we use trays of 60 cells and we put the plants in there. This is what we call, this is our start. And this is what we call the young plant phase. That takes about five, six months again to get this big. So from this little plant to this plant, it's about six months as well. So by that time, this plant is a year old. And these th three leaves, we grew those in the greenhouse. The, the smaller leaves here are the, the left leaves. From finished young plant, what this is called, we transplant it to, into a, a five inch pot with bark. And uh, the loose bark we saw in the video as well, we use that. Uh, it's loose and airy, and that's what the roots like. Um, and that's, that's how we grow them. So this plant now is a year old. We have to grow it uh, for another half a year to make the plant big enough to, towards this size. To, in order to produce good spikes and and um, a good quality of plant, so good spikes means uh, a lot of spikes, a lot of flowers, a good shelf life, things like that. You need a good size plant uh, to, in order to be able to produce that quality. Um, so by this time, this plant is year and a year and a half old now, from start lab until this. Um, I was mentioning young plants and growing. What that means for for us and for an orchid is that if you keep an orchid at 82, between 82 and 85 Fahrenheit, uh, it will only produce leaves. And it produces le leaves from the middle, so from the heart. This is the youngest leaf. So the, the bottom one is the oldest. And it, so basically it grows up like that from the middle. So from if you, if you keep it, even if you keep it a year longer in, in that temperature, it will continue to grow leaves. The plant will only get bigger and bigger. Uh, the moment we put it in cooling, and cooling is around uh, 68, uh, 70 Fahrenheit, that's where it triggers the plant to, uh, to initiate spikes. And in this plant, you can see that. Uh, hopefully everyone can see that. Um, there's a little spike here. And that's, that's where it starts. So from a year and a half to become this big, we put it in the cooling. That triggers it to, to create that spike, to initiate that spike. Then it takes another 18 weeks before it's ready to ship. So that spike is coming out, it's growing, growing. Um, after 15 weeks, we put a, a stake in the clip to support the, the spikes. And then it takes about three weeks more for it to, uh, to start the flowering. And we typically ship, ship this stage of flowering. So the first flowers are there already. And then we uh, ship it to the stores or online. Um, and that's the process. So it's a, uh, it's close to two years before we have this plant. Sure. Wanna, any questions on that? Yeah, we do have some questions. Um, they're not gonna be able to hear me very much. Okay. We have the microphone on you, so that's perfect. But, um, I, can re I can repeat the question then. Yeah. Yep. So the first question is that Pauline just repotted her orchid according to the instructions on your website, but found that the roots were entirely rotten, so ended up cutting them Will the plant be able to regrow the roots and survive? It looks very healthy with blossoms. Okay, okay. Now that's a, it's a good question, and it's always a challenge. Um, and that's the same here in the greenhouse that is at home. Uh, you need a healthy root um, to have a healthy plant. Although sometimes orchids have really few roots, like in this example, and it's still uh, healthy and shiny. Um, but it needs to have some roots. Um, if you repot it. It's a big, it's a big adjustment for the plant. It's a big, big stress factor as, as well. Um, 
I always recommend not to transplant if the, the roots are looking good and it, it, it's okay. So the, for the first half year to a year, I, don't, I wouldn't worry about transplanting uh, over to an, a bigger pot. But if a plant becomes older, which uh, maybe some of you as well have, have that same plant for years already, sometimes it's really time to transplant to refresh the, the substrate. Um, sometimes if you do that, the roots are already gone. It's, it's really living from a, maybe a top root and maybe an air root there. Um, so if you transplant, it, it really takes time to create that new root. An important thing here is um, you need to give enough water, but not too much. If, you, if that substrate is always soaking wet, it's not likely that the roots will go in. Uh, they don't like that as much. And that's why we use that airy substrate as well. Um, and maybe it's good to first explain how to see or how to know if whether a root is wet or dry. And uh, I have an example here um, where this, these roots are uh, silver is white. And you can see it here in here, basically similar to, to this, this color here. Basically, and that's how, how our grower is looking at it as well, uh, daily, this means that it's dry. Uh, is it too dry? Um, if, it's, if all roots are like this, yeah, it's really time to water. But how can you see uh, whether it's wet and you don't have to water it? Then the roots look like this. And from that silver is white and you water this plant here, like within a half an hour, those, those roots are getting darker, darker green. And that's how you can see it. So if the roots look like this, you don't have to water. And especially when you transplant and you don't have many roots, you have to be careful with overwatering. You really want that root to go inside, into, into the pot. Um, so overwatering is, is, is key. And if it really, really there are no roots at all, and uh, you might want to just spray the top part wet and, uh, and just don't water inside if the bark is already wet. Um, another thing there is as well, and that's, um, any excessive water in the ceramic uh, to dump that out. Just, uh, especially if the roots are not, are not healthy, uh, you don't want that bottom pot of the pot in the, sitting in the water. So always when you water, you can check and, and dump the excessive water. Uh, reason why, um, and then that I get to adjust that eyes now, because since we're talking about it, um, watering with water um, works. Uh, no problem, but the, the thing is that it's not always as easy as it looked like. Uh, the bark is so um, that dry and it's, it's, it's uh, airy. So if you water from the top, it typically just drains through right away. Um, so that means that the that water is sitting in the bottom, bottom of the ceramic uh, and the bark cannot uptake that water then. So the water is not available for the plant. Uh, that's the reason why we came up with just that ice uh, for, for first act, it's, it's really simple, right? It's simple instruction every week that you add three to five ice cubes to the plant. Uh, but the good thing now for ice cubes is that it, it melts slowly. So that enables the bark uh, to get that time to absorb that water. And that's a, and that's a big plus because instead of all the water draining to the bottom, it has time to absorb. And, and you know you're not overwatering. Um, so if you still, if you use ice and you have a healthy plant, strong roots, um, you might want to uh, soak it with water sometimes. Uh, but if, if you see that it's dry, but then you use the ice cubes and they look like dark green again, you're doing the right thing. Um, so but back to the question, if, the root, if you pull root quality, try not to overwater. The plant needs enough water, but not, not overwater. Okay, yeah, it could be um, most likely an insect, an aphid, uh, and it could be scale. Um, if it's if it's dark color, and uh, it might be scale, and they let let a let a sugary substance behind. Um, that if that's the case, um, yeah, that's that's uh, there are different ways you can rub it with alcohol or or a little bit of soap and, and wash it off again uh, to get it clean. Um, Typically, those are hard to get rid of. They lay the eggs in every corner of the leaf. 
and it's really hard to uh, to really get it clean. Um, if that's the if that's the case, and it's also the case with if you see white like woolly dots, um, those are um, uh, those are aphids as well. Um, and if you if you have that, uh, those are even harder to get rid of. And um, in the greenhouse, we typically don't deal with it. It really takes it's a really slow process for them to uh, to multiply and to and to become an issue. Um, so here we never see them because we uh, we we have a steady flow. But if a plant gets that old, um, it might might happen. Uh, it might be from other plants in the house. Uh, it's hard to tell where it's coming from or from outside. Or that's really hard. But if it it's really a big investigation on your plan, and it's just that one plan. Um, it's not, it's not a great recommendation, but uh, it's sometimes better to throw away the plant because you can um, contaminate or get get infested to uh, to other plants as well. So I have to be careful with that. Okay, so Although, actually, actually could I say something? And That's I'll my orchid. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, stop and it's yeah. okay. Here's the orchid. And I'm sure you can't a little closer see them, but on the bottom of the leaves are these little sticky brown dots. And I can just smear those off with my finger. He's saying that you could just rub them off with a finger. The, the, see yeah. if I can show you. Oh, okay. got one of I don't see any aphids at all. He doesn't see any aphids. See. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's not, it's not looking like a shell? Is It's more like a... Something yeah, like they're like little little hard shells, and I can literally scrape them off with my finger. Plus, the leaves discharge a sticky, a stickiness. Okay. Most likely, that skill, which is an aphid, it's a weird-looking aphid. It look, looks like a like a shell, and they're underneath there. Um, and this yeah, one you can crack. So if you push on it, it it's a little substance comes out. Um, that, that is treatable. So if you keep wiping it off with alcohol or be careful not to, uh, you have to dilute it uh, or okay. even soap or water. If you keep wiping it off, you can control it. Um, okay. It's hard to get really get rid of. Um, but if you keep doing that in, in, uh, in a weekly, weekly or anytime you see it, the more you're on top of it, the more likely it is that you can control it. Maybe get rid of it, but that's, that chance is slim. Because like I said, they're, they're really, hiding in every corner which we can reach. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, she said thank you. Okay, very welcome. All right, so um, I'm gonna spotlight you again for the moment and I'm gonna ask Kate to introduce herself. Okay, this is Kate, can you hear me? Yes, okay, Kate's talking now. Fantastic. So I have a Phalaenopsis orchid. I've had it for about two years. Um, it hasn't bloomed since it, you know, first lost its flowers from when I bought it. I've tried repotting it because um, I've had a you know, ton of air spikes. I've tried putting it, you know, kind of in the garage in the fall and early winter to kind of expose it to some cooler temperatures. And I haven't had any luck. So I was wondering if you had any tips for kind of helping to induce. I, I you, know, you talked about kind of different temperatures. The orchid is currently living in our master bathroom, so it's you know it's got some good humidity, but it's supposed to some pretty consistent temperatures. I'd say it's probably between like 68 and 72 degrees, so it's kind of on the cooler side. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask him that question for you. Uh, everyone at home could hear. Okay, okay. Um, so she had an orchid for about two years in Phalaenopsis. She used to sit in her room. She heard me say something about. To get it to reach back, yeah, that's a that's a good question and a question we get often. Um, like, how do you get your plant to respike again? Um, try to put it in the in the garage in the fall on fall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> typically, what we uh, what we do, uh, we put it in cooling. It will start uh, to create, initiate that spike. Uh, but light is important as well because you need a, the power of the plant to, to really be able to push it out. Um, in the past, we said as well to keep it in a dark, colder spot because um, it needs that cooling. Uh, what we've learned over the years, it actually needs that light as well. Um, and sometimes the, the more steady uh, 
uh, you know, light temperature is, uh, the, the less likely it's that it's making a spike. Sometimes you have to stress it out in a good way a little bit. So what we find is that in a brighter spot and, and typically not straight direct light, um, could be from the east window or the west window, south window, typically uh, we don't advise. Although a uh, little disclaimer, Derek, that uh, if I tell people, some people say like, oh, mine, mine is in the south window all the time and it does great, which is very possible. Strong plan, uh, right watering and everything, it's possible, but uh, I'm advising more the east, north, uh, west window um, or in a room uh, that the, the plant drives best. If you really want to respike, it needs a little bit more light. So I definitely uh, recommend to put it uh, in a window and preferably the east or the, or the west window. So it gets direct light, but only a short part of the day and the rest it's really diffuse light which uh, Orgus likes most. So um, continue to do what you do, light a spot. And, uh, and typically what a plant wants to do first is growing a new hard leaf. And that, that for us here in the greenhouse takes seven weeks, roughly uh, at home, because um, the growing uh, circumstances are not as ideal as we, what we can do in the greenhouse. It might take three, four, up to six months to really get that leaf and really fully grown. Uh, so it might take half a year before the plant is really ready to start initiating that spike. Um, so patience is key as well. Um, and, but we hear a lot of different feedback from people that they, the plant continues to uh, push out new spikes to people that have it for a year and it doesn't come out. So it's a little bit of uh, circumstances at home um, for myself as well. My previous house, it didn't work as well as my, where I live now. It's a little lighter. I've, more plants in the windows, um, but it's also the variety. We, uh, we grow um, uh, like a hundred varieties, different varieties, different colors. Uh, the one does it much easier than the other. And, and we don't know, we don't, don't test that here because uh, once it's flower, we, we ship it to, uh, to customers. Um, so we don't have that, that knowledge of what, flower, what variety does better, but we know it, it, that is happening. So don't always take it personal. It's also the plant, the, he the health of the plant, the variety, the circumstances. So it's, uh, it's hard to predict, but it can do it. Okay. Uh, next question is from Merle. Hello. Greetings from New York City. Oh, she's from New York. Nice. Um, in October, I got the plant uh, as of March 14th was 12 weeks uh, since I cut it back. And it seems I keep it in North window and it has its weekly ice in it right now, which is a great tip. And uh, it seems to be growing some spikes. Uh, but my question is, should I transplant it? And do I need to fertilize it? I can show you, I don't know if you can see it. It seems to be, it seems to be doing, creating spikes quite well. There's actually, okay. like okay. there's actually seems four of them. Okay, yep. So the, the question is, um, at, since October, you have the plant, it's probably the flowers are not on there anymore, I think I saw. So it's a, uh, the flowers are, yeah. So uh, typically si since it ages, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't say to, to transplant it yet. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a year old yet. Um, so what uh, you buy the plant, it's flowering a certain time, uh, the flowers are done, they're dropping off. They have that stem uh, like you have. Um, what you got to do then is cutting the spikes off. Unless, unless sometimes uh, a branch here, starts to grow and I'm not sure if I I have an example here I've all, I've already or cut here we have back. some oh. she's already cut back. okay yeah but the, the they're still quite tall are, the little spikes are growing how long do, do does it take to actually that, for something more to happen like a few more months or for the blooms you mean yeah oh yeah she's wondering how long until the blooms the spikes. He has new spikes. Okay, because it looks like those spikes were broken off. Oh, yeah, no one, 
Oh, see, there's a new one. See this one. See, it's growing. Oh, oh, out of the nose there. Yeah, the see this oh, okay. one there? It's hard for him to see. He's far away from the camera. Oh, right, yep. sorry. Now he sees it. See, okay, so they're coming out of the note right now? It's quite okay. a few nodes. So that's, that's great because then you basically get like this where you have the side branches. So um, it takes weeks for that to grow and then to finally flower. Um, so always when, uh, when it's, it's bloomed out, the flowers are dropping off, uh, check if anywhere from the nodes it's, it's growing new, a new branch. Uh, if that's the case, like what you did just did there, uh, you break it off or cut it off just above that, that branch and that node, mm -hmm. and it will start to grow that, that new branch. Uh, often it doesn't do that, then, then we recommend to cut the leaf or the, the spike just above that first node here. Um, hopefully everyone can see that right here. Um, so just an inch to inch above the soil level. There we go. Here's what he's trying to do. Oh yeah, C I couldn't see it. So right, right here. Off the first note that's where we uh then cut it off because typically it's not growing a new spike from the old spike only from the top is possible typically it doesn't do here so what it does if you take that spike off uh the energy is not concentrating through that spike anymore uh but we'll concentrate on creating that new leaf and trying to push out just above where the previous spikes were to push out a new spike there there seems to be uh several nodes growing was it down below there seems to be several nodes growing you can keep going lucia i mean merle i'm sorry yeah it should be there seems to be more nodes growing it hasn't dried up is what i'm saying they're they're green and they seem to be you can't really see it i don't think but they the lower ones seem to be um thriving that's so there's a lot of uh, things inside that in the pot that are brown and dried up but it seems to whatever is happening seems to be working oh, okay. I, I assume yeah she said she feels like whatever is happening seems to be working right now those spikes are still green and that's something that she wanted to point out yeah they're still green and they're still healthy at the top so it might not be time to come back but she uh she had asked yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, the stems are still green. Uh, it's, it's worth to just give it time to see if it grows. So uh, that might work. So it will be great. Um, on fertilization, uh, typically we say that the first month you don't have to worry about it because it's uh, there's enough from what we have done here. The greenhouse is still in that bar. Um, over time, um, there's special uh, uh, organ fertilizer available. Uh, for purchase to, to add to it. Um, once a month, uh, that should be uh, sufficient. Uh, don't overdo it, because um, that's more uh, harmful than good. Um, so once a month, uh, instructions on the, on, the, uh, on the bottle should be there as well, but always needs to be diluted with water, because um, the concentration straight out of the bottle is way too high. So uh, uh, don't pour it straight onto the, onto the bark. Um, diluted first as the as the instructions are indicating how do you know what the ratio of fertilizer is to buy for your plant how do you know the ratio of fertilizer to buy for your plant? uh yeah the varies by brand so really that that really needs to be looked at uh, at, the, at the instructions on the bottle um and i think uh if there's special orchid fertilizer and that should indicate the right um, instructions for orchids Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, she said thank you. Thank you, Merle. Okay, so our next question is from Lucille. Um, she didn't seem to need to ask the question on camera. So what do, what do they do with multiple air roots or trailers that grow from the pot? Yeah, so more air, air roots are, are roots that they're basically, you're sticking up for growing outside of the pot. Um, Orchids do it like we see here as well, and out in the greenhouse, it does the same thing. Um, like if they really bother, you can break them off or cut them off. Uh, sometimes they, they, they use it as well. Every bit of water they can uh, catch is, is useful. And, and to explain that, 
a little further. I'm breaking one off and I'll try to show that on camera um, what an organ root is and, um, and how it works. Because again, it's, it, in nature, it's growing on that tree it doesn't have soil to have that water buffer. Um, so it, it, an organ invented something, another smart thing to survive. Uh, you see the, org, the organ root here, it's, it's, if you squeeze it, it's a little spongy. Um, and it is really a kind of sponge. It's, um, you look at the root and you make, you open it. I think I left part of it here. Inside this big root, there is a little string, which you can see here. This is the real root where the infestation of the water and nutrients towards the plant is moving through. This is basically that tissue. There are cells and they really function as a sponge. So what they do, if, if it rains or if we water at home, uh, and that's why the color is changing, it's absorbing water and it's holding that water to be available for the next days. And that's why we, <clears throat> we only water it once a week because it's, it's the buffer, it's the water that absorbs from the bark into this root, into this root. Uh, if the bark is dry and there's still moisture here, which that would be indicated if it's still green, this root can still absorb the water out of the tissue there. Um, so uh, always be careful not to, not to cut off too many roots. I would leave some air roots, um, but if they're really a lot, you can always trim some off. Uh, but it, it could have a function. And you, what you do see is that if the roots are, the plant is not too happy inside the pot, especially if they become older and you haven't transplanted yet, uh, they might grow more air roots as well. Jimmy, we have a question. Uh, the spikes that turn brown and die, and the leaves are still there. Could any move into a warm attic for a few weeks and then bring it down to cool in order to promote growth? Um, you, you could do it. Um, and like I said, in the, in the past, we might have recommended that. Uh, what we've learned over the years is that you don't really have to do that. I would say keep it, keep it. where you have a little bit more light uh, if it hasn't already and, and move it there and continue to do what you do it it just takes a lot of time and again some plants do it faster than others uh, but patience is key there yeah patience and good care that's a uh, best ingredient okay so you can induce it by putting it in the yeah so i wouldn't recommend it because attic is probably dark um, and we really need that light for the plant to continue to grow. That's basically uh, the best thing to do. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna ask Pat's question for them. Um, one leaf is, one leaf on the dormant plant has a powdery brown substance on it. Others, other leaves look healthy, and they travel can't Okay, so the question was there's a, plant, healthy plant, but then one of the leaves has a powdery brown substance on it, um, which I'm not sure. It could be a kind of mold, um, and then you can wipe it off with a, just a wet towel or a wet cloth, uh, wipe it off and see if it, if it stays clean, if it's coming back. It's a, it's a little uncommon, I would say. Uh, we don't see it here. I don't see it often uh, at home either. Um, so I would suggest wiping it off and it should take care of it. If the plant is healthy and healthy looking, it should, it should do it. Okay, I hear we have some more people uh, coming in. Uh, if there are more questions, you're very welcome to ask. Um, I cannot hear you, but uh, I, they forward me the, the questions here. So uh, always welcome for more questions. Okay. Um, can you ask Dory if she wants to show us her orchid? Yeah. Dor yeah, Dory. Dory? Hey, Dory, I got a question here. If you can show your, um, your orchid. Okay. Yeah, she's going to. Okay. Uh, all right. So the question is, 
I know I say this wrong usually, so I'm going to try again, but is it called a kite team? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you my orchid. If you can wait a second, um, they love my sunroom. Hold on one second. Uh, maybe you can, uh, maybe you can, can you see that? that? Yeah. Okay. Now there's there we go. There's, there's there. And there's um, my kiki. Yeah, that's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah, it's very uh, cool. We call this a kaiki, and a kaiki is, is basically okay. a, a new plant on your on your existing plants. Um, and uh, I hope everyone can see it from there. And I have one here as well later to show. Um, basically, what it does is it's it's, it's growing a, a new plant on the stem. And the reason why it's probably doing that is that something might have happened with the plant itself. Uh, so the the original plant. Um, if you look at your plant, and, and Dory, maybe you can show it um, your your plant. And, and could you show the the hard leaf, so the the center of the leaf there? Center. Sure, I'll try. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Most of the time, what you see, and I don't see it here um, from what I can see, but it's if something happens with the hard leaf and it stops to grow, it could be the plant is sick or anything else. Uh, it wants to survive, so it's creating a new a new plant on the okay. stem, and that, that's what happens in nature as well. As they get old and big and really big, um, they, they're gonna try to survive by creating this. So basically, it starts with a mistake, mm. uh, but it's very very cool mistake because um, you're creating your own new plant. Um, but, what you I'm not sure if so what asking. that means is though my plant is really dying. I had heard that it could be a good or a bad sign. Yeah, trying to determine if it's a good or bad sign. Mm. It, it could be the case, but if I saw the plant, uh, the original plant, it's looking healthy and, and good still. So it's, it's definitely not a bad thing. It's actually a, a quite a cool thing because you're creating your new plant there. Um, so that looks like the plant will survive. Um, the original plant, it might be, and that's maybe I can show it from this example as well. Um, we sometimes see it in the, in the greenhouse too. Um, this one is a little bigger already. So this is the original plant here. Oh. And then this is a spike where we now have a, a big new plant on. Uh, from this plant here, you can definitely tell, um, you can see it, I'm trying to show there, this really small hard leaf here. It's, uh, it's deformed. And it's, it's just not looking good. So either it's been damaged by something, the mechan mechanical damage, or it's, it's, uh, it's a, the plant gets a little sick. Um, and sick means not that it, it will survive because it doesn't look sick, but it's just just a mistake or anything that happened there. Um, now it's creating this here. What you could do, and it's a kind of, it's a little tricky sometimes, but you could take it off, especially if it, the kaiki, if it starts to produce a, a root here, and that this is a root here, a new root. And uh -huh. that's a good sign, because then if you have that, and maybe one or two roots, you could cut it off and transplant it into a new pot with bark. And if you do okay. that, and uh, that will take a little patience, but the, if the roots will grow into the, the pot, you created your new plants. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. That's, that, that is recommended as well, because if it gets this big, um, funny thing, this one is still flowering. Uh, but if it gets bigger and bigger, it will probably break off and it really wants its own pot then, by then. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a question from an iPad. Um, they fertilize with miracle growth or fertilizer and have a negative the um, may I ask what the negative effect was? Was it the roots or the plant itself? That was my question okay. and my plant. Um, the leaves kind of got weathered and um, looking and just kind of floppy. Are you able to show us? 
Uh, I should be. Let me see if I. Okay, cool. Um, it sounds like the roots either died or got harmed by the by the fertilizer, or they were, were already weak. Um, so it could be it could still be following the instruction, but if you do it too often, for example, um, and it's, then it's adding up, and, and basically uh, the, the salt level in the pot gets too high for the root to to thrive. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying that's the case. It could be that, that you perfectly followed the instructions. Um, and it's something else. Um, but it sounds like that if all roots are dying and the plant is not able to absorb their water uh, and nutrients, that yeah, it's not supporting uh, what the plant needs. And then you get the, those leathery leaves. Um, I have to say that, uh, especially if you have an older plant, the, the bottom leaves typically get, get drier over time. They're just after a year, maybe two, three years, they're just done. And so it's perfectly normal for an older plant to drop those leaves, that they turn yellow or, or leathery first, dry, yellow, and then they eventually fall off. Um, that's perfectly fine if these top leaves are still growing, look shiny and everything like that. Um, but if the whole plant is, is leathery, then it's either been too dry uh, or over watered, that the, basically looking back at the roots, like how are the roots doing? Probably the roots are not good enough to support the plant. Yeah, the leaves, I mean, they look a little bit better. I took them out. I'm having a hard time getting the video going here, but I'm continuing to work on it. The roots in the container are green. Some of them look a little bit weathered, but I mean, it looks kind of healthy, but it, and it was a healthy plant before I fertilized. I was just reading that's what I should do. And I think I, uh, and it, According to the directions, it said just to spray the plant, the leaves, the bark, and everything, which is what I did. Okay, so um, basically, if you follow the directions, um, was, it, was it orchid fertilizer? Yes, it was. Miracle oh, Grow. Miracle Grow. It still seems fine with that weather thing. Happening. The root still leaves mm -hmm. looking. Okay. It's, yeah, if the roots are still looking good, it might have been that the plant that has been too dry. Um, and that's, that's, it's hard to tell from not seeing the plant and, 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 and not knowing, but uh, if from one day to the other, uh, the plants are, 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 are droopy and uh, they're leathery, it might be that uh, the pot is too dry. So I would recommend then, if you start to see that, like look at the roots, are they silver is white? You might at the ice cubes every week or add water every week, uh, but might be not enough. Um, to really have a, if that happens and you really find out, okay, it's been really, it's, it's really been too dry, I would recommend as a reset to take the pot out of the ceramic um, or keep, keep the ceramic there, but hold it on underneath the faucet. Let the water run in and really soak it for five minutes. Let the bark absorb all the water, the roots, all the water. Um, after the five minutes, take it out, dump the excessive water and put the plant back. That's really a good reset moment for the plant that, that the bark absorbs all the water. And then from there, you can start your normal watering schedule again. Um, that's, that's recommended. It sounds like that, but again, it's a little hard to really be sure if that's the case. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Jackie. Thank you. Um, this is what I'm wondering about. I have this brown stem, brown from, from the tip up here to the bottom to the root. Brown stem from the tip of the spike to the root. And then on the other side, the brown goes from here to just this point. Okay, and then just from the tip to one of the top nodes 
So what do you do with those brown parts? Okay, so um, first of all, it's, it's totally normal that uh, a, a spike, uh, the blooms fall off after they're done, that the spike turns brown. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So what I can see from the, from the leaves there, it's nice and shiny. The plant is doing, uh, is doing well. So they're taking good care of that. Um, and that, that you have one spike turning brown faster than the other, that's, that's totally normal as well. Um, so what we always advise to do is, is cutting the spikes off, because especially if they turn brown, no new branch will start to grow. Uh, it, it's best to cut them off above that first node, around that okay, one to two inches high uh, from, the, from the bottom there. So, um, so this, get, get rid of the one, brown spikes. So this one goes completely. Is so that what you're saying? No, you don't have to wait. No, it's a, either way is fine. Um, but I think the, the faster you, you cut it off, the, the faster the plant will um, focus himself on, on growing that new leaf, trying to get that new spike out. So it's a, either way okay. is fine. Okay. And uh, this one here, do I, I cut it above that point at which it's brown or I don't want to cut below because there's a new or the other one comes out here. Okay, so she's confirming that she should just cut above where it's green, right? Nowhere that it's green, right? Or wait a minute, she's asking, she just wants to preserve that side branch. So she wants to cut above. Yeah. It looks like, is that side branch producing new buds as well? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet, but it looks like they're Okay, now that's, this is a perfect example, uh, and I didn't see it at first. So, a uh, perfect example of, like, yeah, the flower is dropping off, but the plant is making that new side branch. Uh, perfect. I clip it like you, uh, like you had it there, uh, just below that, that branch or above, if that still supports the brown part. Uh, but it might be safest to cut the brown part off, clip it just underneath the branch, and then you have that new, and then new flowers will come soon. Um, still, I would cut the, the other one off. That is completely brown. Uh, that won't do the same thing. But now this is great because then uh, you can enjoy the next flower sooner than uh, when you, uh, you cut them both off. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. Um, all right. So uh, I've got a couple questions that I don't think are going to require being on camera right at the moment. Uh, but I do, but can you encourage some more people to ask some questions? Yeah, so if there, if there are more questions, please, uh, please ask them. I'll try to answer as many uh, questions today as possible. To noon? Okay, so it's, it's going to be till noon, so if about 30 minutes more. Um, okay, cool. So um, if an orchid is in an east-facing room with good indirect light, That's a good question. So by moving the plant close to the window, you do have that more the fluctuation in temperature. Uh, although your, your room temperature might be consistent during day and night, uh, at the window it's, it's always colder. Um, so that's definitely a, a, a good question and I, I recommend it to do that. Uh, close to the window during night, the leaves are getting cold. Um, it triggers the plant to initiate that spike perhaps faster. Um, so yeah, if, if it's in the room, and you have room at the window, uh, it will help to initiate that spike. Okay, and in orchids grow in a water environment, no bark in water? They can, they, uh, they, they can. I, I know that uh, they're being sold like that sometimes as well. The, it's, uh, the thing is that the roots are sensitive uh, and having them always in water uh, is tricky. Um, sometimes it's better that if they're being sold in water, for example, or you have them in water to keep them in water. Um, but it's not recommended to always have them in the water because the chance that they start to rot and, and, and not grow anymore uh, is, is big. And it's not likely that the next root that's growing out of the plant will go into the water, it'll probably go out of the water. So it's, a, it's definitely not recommended. Okay, 
it's possible. And that's the funny thing with orcas, everything we talk about, uh, I can recommend, but some people do it and it works. Um, and every plant is different. And I think that's the beauty of it as well. We all have different uh, experience with plants, with orchids. Um, and we see the last plant as well, where the one, it's the same plant, but the one stem gets brown and the other one produces new brains. Uh, it's really unpredictable, but it, this, with this case as well, it might work, although I cannot recommend it because it's, it's more risky for root rot and losing the roots and eventually losing the plant. Okay, how often should an orchid be repotted? Um, so how often is a, there's not a, a strict timeline on that. So it's also, okay. So the question was, uh, how often, uh, does a plant need to be repotted and what pot, uh, what's the best way to do it and what pot size? Um, there's not a fixed timeline on when you need to do it. It's also how the root, the plant is doing, uh, how the roots are doing. Uh, it's really time to do it. If, if, the plants get uh, older than a year, I would say two was two years, and you st really start to see there are no healthy roots inside the bark anymore. Um, then there might be, that might be too crowded with old roots, and old roots, they, they start to rot at some, a certain time, which is no problem as long as you get new roots in there. So if you start to see that, and again, first year it shouldn't be needed, but after that, um, there are, um, complete kits for sale also on our, on our website uh, where you can buy uh, the bark and then uh, the pot, uh, which is a bigger pot. So this is a five inch pot. Uh, that is more like a six inch pot. So a little bit bigger. So it's recommended if you do that uh, to go one pot size bigger. Uh, reason for that is that the plant is bigger as well as it's, as it's getting older and growing. It's getting bigger and for most plants it's the same thing the bigger plant the bigger the pot needs to be um, but you don't have to go big it's just at just the, from five inches to six inches is, is plenty big enough um, okay uh, we've got someone on an iphone sharing a picture did you did you have a question that you'd like to ask us you'd have to unmute yourself All right, uh, if not, then I'm just gonna go ahead and unshare that picture here. Thank you for sharing that picture though, pretty cool. Looked like it might've been one of the Just Add Ice ones. All right, um, Pauline did have a question though, and said that they could go ahead and show up on camera. So let me see if I can spotlight Pauline. Oh, there I found you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add you to the spotlight so we can see you. Okay. Okay. So, what's the question, Paul? Okay. Can you let her know if you can talk to her? Yeah, I, I just Sorry, repotted this. Okay, she said she just repotted that. Well, okay. When I did, I found all the roots were rotten, so I cut them all off, and I'm wondering if it could survive now. Okay, all the roots were rotten, so she cut them all off, and she's wondering if it'll still survive. Yeah, so the question is, uh, it's just repotted the plant, uh, but the roots are uh, were in bad shape, rotted, um, so I cut them off. Uh, can the plant still survive? Uh, yes, it can. Um, in this case, like if, if you just repot it and there are no good roots left, don't put it in a bright spot. Um, I think that's that's uh, that's important first. Uh, it can have light, but I would not put it in any window. Uh, put it in the middle of your, of your room. Um, so it's still a little bit of light, so it can still uh, grow. Uh, the key thing is there where we which which we discussed, like yeah, it needs enough water. Uh, but not too much. Um, so keeping the top layer of the bark uh, somewhat moist uh, is probably key to get the first roots out. Um, meaning that you might want to do your normal watering so the bark is wet, but not more than that. And then if the top layer is really dry, 
to spray a little bit of water on the top layer so that the roots are coming out easier and they are willing to go into the bark. Um, so again, not overrunning the bark to keep the bark wet, but the top layer you want to keep a little bit wet. Uh, once that roots coming out, um, then it can start at, to go into the bark and, and start to grow again. And if you have uh, a couple of roots coming out again, then you can start placing it in a lighter uh, spot again. Uh, but it definitely can, oh. can survive as long as, as we are careful with, careful with light. And it did have some air roots that I stuck down in the, in the bark. Okay, she said it also has some air roots still down that she stuck down in the bark. Is that okay? That's okay, yeah, that's okay. Um, air roots, it's, it's not always that they survive because air roots um, are a little different. I think they uh, uh, adjust to the circumstances versus a root that's going into the bark. Um, so, but it's a good thing to put them in the bark if you transplant them and there's no root, good root at all there. So you did the right thing there. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I hope it works. Yeah. All right, thanks, Pauline. We'll go back over. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I, I always recommend to have a, a plastic pot uh, where the plant is in and uh, any ceramic or any, any other thing you like it, put it in, that's fine. But it, it likes to have that, that um, protection uh, and, and a closed off environment there. Um, so if repotting, it's always recommended to, um, uh, to buy a plastic pot and a size bigger uh, if possible. Uh, and if not, if you don't, but you have a similar one, it's possible to put it in the same size, but recommend it is bigger. Um, you can you uh, you can pot it in a in a different pot that without a plastic pot, it, it might work. Uh, the hard thing is you you never be able to look at the roots again, and for okay. for a lot of plants, it's not really needed. But with this, you can lift it out of the ceramic and you can see the roots. Can and, I show you mine? What what we said here as well, the our growers. And they're looking at the leaves, but they're looking as much to the roots as well, because it's a, really the balance between the two. So uh, repotting, going to a bigger pot, it is recommended to use a plastic transparent pot so you can see the roots. Um, but if you really want to have it in a pot that uh, you don't have that, it's a little harder to water. And uh, But if you find your way and, and you don't overwater, you know you're not overwatering, uh, right. that's fine. But it's also answering the question about the holes in a pot. Uh, we always need to have holes in the pot so to be able to drain the water. Um, and if it's if the bottom part is always wet, that's fine. But we don't want the water all the way up there. So uh, if I you have a pot and it doesn't a different kind of pot that doesn't have holes in the, at the bottom, you can always poke some holes in there or on the side as well. Can I show you what I have it in now? Okay, she's going to show what. This is what it's in now. Okay, oh, it's, yep. it's a like it's a wooden right. container. And as you can see, I'm sorry, it's so dark here, but it's leaning and the roots, I don't know whether it's really bad bark. <laughs> and then I've got all these really wrapped good. around the box. If I repot it, do I just cut all these off? Okay, she's talking about how those roots are actually growing around it. And she's wondering if those should get cut off. Should she even repot it or is it good where it's at? Uh, it looks uh, that it's good where it's at, and I, I would leave the roots on there because they're still they're still useful. These roots. If it's a really excessive amount, then uh, yeah, you can trim some off, but I, I would definitely not trim them off all. Well, should all I leave there. it in this container? Would you? Do you recommend um, this, or should I repot into a plastic? In um, would you recommend for transplanting it? Um. Yeah, it's not able to lift it off to the cedar roots in this case. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's much better. Yeah, it looks like the, the age of the plant would be good. Uh, what can be, because it's up higher from the bark a little bit, 
Like yeah. if you're a little nervous to transplant or you don't really want to transplant, you can also always put some fresh bark on top because it looks like it could use that. Okay, so and just uh, add the, the bark is doing well. and leave it. So she's saying, she's repeating, she said, so just add some bark and leave it? That would be fine, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. okay. And if then later the plant is really not doing well, then you can always decide to transplant. But, and then um, get... Again, the trans... Oh, How big of a container? It, but... This is a big plant. Okay, so if it gets to that point, how big of a container would be like the next step? This is already a bigger container, so that oh. same size would would be uh, would work. Okay. Because if you okay. if you're already in a really big size, yeah, you don't have to go bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't okay. need that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. She just said thank you. Okay. Welcome. Somebody else had a question that I might as well uh, throw in. It was about what kind of bark, and you might have mentioned it, but uh, just in case they weren't here yet. Yeah, we use pine bark, um, and that's that's recommended to use. Okay, so pine. All right. And um, <clears throat> depends on. A, there are different mixes for for sale. Uh, some some do mix it with either sphagnum moss. Um, the the, the bark we grow in is just bark. It's a it's a little it's a smaller size bark. Um, so, in the market there's a different uh, particle sizes of bark for sale. So you don't want to go too big because the bigger the particle is, it means the drier the substrate is. Uh, so the bigger the chances that the plants are too dry. Uh, but sometimes it's, it's bigger particles, but then mixed in with uh, sphagnum moss or cocoa peat, um, and then uh, it can be bigger particles because the sphagnum moss would hold water. Uh, but if it's just bark, then uh, don't go too big in particle size. Okay. Are air roots a bad sign? No, no, uh, it's definitely not a bad sign. It could mean that the roots inside the pot are not too happy. Um, but if you see new roots there or active roots or, or even new roots coming from the crown, because I don't think I mentioned that, but uh, I'll come a little closer. Um, where the roots start to grow is really from the crown. Hopefully we can see this one here. And that's pointing down. This one is most likely going in, into the pot. Uh, but as you can see, there are a lot of roots in this one here. And then from the main root, it's making side branches as well. And the easy way to see if your root is Really happy roots are nice and pointy. Like, I hope people can see this. It's a, there's a nice point on there. If it's, the point is getting brown, um, not as pointy anymore, uh, it means it's becoming inactive, which is again, uh, quite normal. Even if it's still fresh and green, it's still active, it's still working. Um, you, cannot, you cannot have, typically at home, you don't have as many active roots as we have here. As the plant gets older, um, and then at home we can create like what we can create in the greenhouse. So, uh, but if, is asking if you can take the roots out of the pot, I can, I can do that. I'm gonna make a mess here. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, this is a nice pointy root. Now we have another one here, and this is. From a different root, so it's it's branching off from a different root. There's a root. So if they're looking like like this, nice and pointy, that's when they're happy. And that's the thing at home. You don't want to do this really unless you want to uh, repot it, because you can't get it back because the roots are <laughs> stuck now. But that's it. so if I, if I take it out, it's interesting to see. And this is what we consider a really healthy plant with a lot of roots. Uh, but if I take shake the bark off, this is actually how it looks. It's pretty cool, and that's that's how like if this is a tree. This is how it's climbing onto the tree in the nature. And here we see, here we see that block where we grew the, the young plant in, you can still see it. 
and that's where uh, this young plant transplanted into uh, into bark, and now it's a, a mature plant. But the start is still there. Okay. okay. about uh, one of their orchids says that it's bloomed every year for three years that they've had it but they are wondering how you can persuade it to produce two spikes yeah that's uh that's what we try to do here as well and uh for a large part successful but then uh some plants just don't uh produce that so um even though we know uh, we do a lot here in the greenhouse. If I try to do it at home, typically it's a single spike. If it respikes, it hardly ever is a double spike. It really needs all that energy, what we can, uh, the right at CO2, water, light, and everything perfect to uh, in order to create uh, a double spike. Um, so you're putting the bar a little too high if you want to do that at home. Uh, it's a great goal, uh, and great if people could share if if, if they manage to do that. But it's uh, it's not likely that it happens. So uh, I would celebrate if you have one good spike and uh, and enjoy the, the flowers there. Uh, is it okay if if they have a flower that's uh, fused to another flower? Fused to another flower. Okay. So a flower with two faces on it. Oh, yeah, that's what we call a mutation. So basically, so the question is. Is it okay when a, when a flower basically is what we call mutated? So it either has two lips, which we uh, some people call throat or lip, and that's where the center of the flower. Sometimes by mistake, um, it makes it a two lips, which we call a mutation. Um, it's perfectly fine. Uh, it's a different look, unique look, uh, but there's nothing wrong with the plant. And uh, we do see it in the greenhouse as well, and that's. Uh, and, and that's what we, where we select on as well. Like if we do see it, we uh, typically try not to select a variety like that. Because uh, what we try to do um, here is to work it together with the breeders. And, uh, and breeders are ongoing. They, they're looking for different colors, better specs. Um, and specs means uh, compact leaf size or the right spikes height, enough flowers, enough double stems. Um, and sometimes we have the most beautiful flowers, but then either they're really high in mutation or the spikes are way too short or way too tall. So we really like the flower. We know that uh, customers, consumers would, would like the flower as well, but it just doesn't fit in our program. If the spikes are way too tall, uh, it simply doesn't work to pack those plants. So on an ongoing basis here, we have an R&D develop uh, department as well, where we work together with to find the, the, rest, the best variety. So, um, Breeders will, uh, will come up with new varieties. They ask us if, if we want to test that. Uh, we put them out in the greenhouse. It takes a year and a half to finish that plant. Then we see that plant. And then uh, every week we see about 10, 50 new varieties where we look at and then uh, measure and look at, the, at the, how they look and how they do. And we also do shelf life testing on that because we want uh, you all to uh, to enjoy your flowers as long as possible. So certain varieties have a really poor shelf life and we will never select that because we will we know that it's not going to be a great experience uh, for everyone. So um, that selection is really important. Uh, but uh, back to the mutation question, if a variety is really sensitive, uh, we will not select it. Uh, we know some people like it, but we also know that some people uh, don't like it. Um, so we try to stay away from that. But if it happens, there's nothing wrong with the plants. Okay, are most of these tips that you're giving us for both the regular size orchids and the mini orchids somebody wanted to know? Yeah, so uh, we haven't touched on that. What we have looked at is the five inch pot. Uh, we do grow, we have a program in three inch as well, um, which is a mid size, and then uh, the petite orchid, and then we have the mini orchid, which is uh, it's about two inch, and, and it's really small so everything the leaves are smaller uh, the spikes are shorter the, the flowers are smaller um, so basically what, uh, what we've just been talking about uh, pertains to all sizes um, reef uh, reblooming a, a mini orchid uh, is a challenge the mini orchids is uh, smaller but it's also 
uh, weaker overall. So it, it can happen, um, but it's not as likely as with a three inch and a five inch orchid. But the minis are really nice and cute and they, uh, they grow faster in our greenhouse as well. Uh, and they can do real well at home as well. But to get them to respike is a, can be a challenge. Um, brown edges could be uh, different different factors. So it could be from being too dry, um, and then if it, that's in combination with too much light, uh, the plant is basically stretching out. It cannot keep up with it, uh, and it could either uh, turn brown, especially around the edges, uh, if you or yellow around the edges, uh, or reddish of color. Um, that's a little bit is okay, um, but too much then you know, okay, it's either too dry or it's in, in, in a spot that's too bright for the plant to handle. If you really get uh, dark spots and really bur like burnt spots, yeah, then it's really, really too, too bright and, and most likely in direct sunlight. Um, so if you do see it, I would say try to find a, a, a spot where it's still light, but not as much light. Uh, split leaves, it could be a mechanical damage. Um, could also be again if the leaf gets older, it gets a little bit more brittle. Um, so by touching it, it can just split. But this one has it a little bit as well. I can show it a little up closer. Um, here you see split as well. A little bit is okay. The plant do doesn't suffer too much from this, but uh, it's becoming more likely that it happens as the leaf gets older. No, 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 no. Like we said, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, going to be really clear on this one. Now. So what we, uh, if you, repotting always means stress. Uh, and that's, that's already from uh, the greenhouse as well, from this particular environment into, into this is a really big shock. So what we do in the greenhouse as well, we, we start with low light levels. We do, everything is, is easy. And this is what we call our babies. And so we have to protect them. Um, then we transplant them from this into this. We do the same thing. We, at this age, it could handle more light, but from the transplanting and the stress of it, we, at the first weeks, we protect it. Um, so that's the same with the flowers. Like, at the flowers, you enjoy them the longest if it's steady and the plant is not stressing out. Um, so, yeah, that's a, it's a good question. Um, but yeah, please don't transplant if it's a flower. Um, yeah, so at home stressing could mean um, uh, that, you, that you're, it's been in a too bright of a spot. Um, basically, if you put it in another spot, not as bright, it's a matter of, of weeks to recover. Um, but you, you have learned then by that time, like, okay, that spot might have been too bright. Uh, and it would, would, that would be the south window that you know, okay, uh, let's recover for a couple couple weeks in a, not a dark spot, but a, a, a just a, in, in the middle of the room, for example. And then if you think like, okay, it's, it's after a couple of weeks, it's ready again, then put it in a northeast or south or west window and not in the south window. Um, try to learn from that and find another better spot for it. Okay. Uh, what does it mean when the leaves are more horizontal and curled down and pointing up? Yeah. That's a good question. Too. Like it, it is varietal. We do see like uh, different leaf types, uh, different shapes. Um, some are really upright, some are flat. Uh, but if your plants start like this, and over time they get a little bit more droopy, uh, which is somewhat normal. But if they really hang, uh, typically that means either not enough water, too much light, uh, or no good roots. Um, so then you're starting by, okay, if, if they really feel soft, um, yeah, so you still want light, but find that other spot where it's not too bright. Um, also look at the roots. Like, do you feel like you're overwatering or is it too dry or too many times? Uh, if it's too dry and you're doing uh, three ice cubes a week, I would say then make it four or five. 
um, if, the, if, your, uh, if your water, um, you feel like it's wet, then you might need to uh, up your um, interval of how often you, you water the plant. So once a week should be enough, uh, but you really want the plant to have green roots after watering. Um, and with ice cubes, it could take a couple hours before it's all melted. But the next day you want to see green roots. The next day you don't see green roots, uh, still those uh, silver is white roots. Uh, it means that you need to uh, water more. Um, so mostly it's, it's a combination when the leaves have either been too bright, too dry, or no good roots, and they will, they're not too happy and they, they will drop a little bit. Once that has happened, uh, most of the time, the plant doesn't reshape back to its original position. Uh, only the new leaves that come out, they will be upright again, uh, but the old leaves will maintain that shape. <laughs> yeah, we don't use ice cubes. There will be a lot of ice cubes. Um, actually, it's a interesting question because we uh, we see those bars uh, up there here, and uh, that's what we call booms. Um, and those are um, somewhat automated. The grower sets here on the panel sets how many passes we want to do, and out of all those nozzles, uh, water is flowing down, and the booms are walking over the crop basically so we have boom rails where they hang over the crop and they roll over the crop and we do a couple passes like that uh, to really soak soak the plants and so before watering we look at the roots okay it's ready to water tomorrow for example then we set the booms for tomorrow and tomorrow morning early uh, so it doesn't interfere with people working here and trying to pull uh, the plants for orders uh, or just move them around to another phase uh, we set them early in the morning. Okay. Uh, we have about three minutes. Do you okay. want to take any more questions? Uh, or do we have any no, absolutely. If there's a, another okay. question. Uh, this, there's one about roots. This is a, the person who had asked you to show us the roots earlier. Noticed uh, that those roots were nice and green. So um, there's our gray. Uh, and it says, what did they do with them when they're gray looking? Did they cut them? Uh, and gray inside the pot? Uh, doesn't say yet. Gray usually means that they need water, right? Maybe we need to find out if they're yeah. also scribbled up or dry. Right, so, so maybe good to explain, uh, which I haven't mentioned, the air roots typically are always gray. Uh, if, even if you, uh, you water here, uh, it won't absorb the water all the way here. Um, so from the spongy uh, material, it will go from there into the, uh, the string, the real root, uh, but it won't go from one root into the spongy sub substance again. Uh, so you don't have to soak the air roots or anything like that. They probably don't really like that either. Uh, so the air roots are gray and that's fine. If the, the roots are in the, the pot are gray and, uh, and uh, you water every week, uh, you use the ice cubes, you use water, and it's still gray even the day after watering. Uh, I would recommend more ice cubes or more water. And just sometimes if that's, and that still results in, in still gray roots all time long, yeah, really soak it in water at one time real well. Let it sit for five minutes, take it out, and that's really a good reset. Mostly after uh, the bark is really moist again, then the water pattern you used to do is sufficient to uh, to make it work. Okay. Is misting your plant a good idea, and should it be done on a regular schedule? Um, it is a good idea. We we do it in the greenhouse as well to maintain the humidity level. We do. We have a uh, high pressure misting uh, lines ever in the greenhouse, um, and then we control we control that humidity level uh, around 50, 60 percent. Uh, often in, in our house, especially in winter time when we heat a lot, it will uh, get down to 40%, um, and that's okay. Um, the thing is, you cannot all day long miss your plants to keep the humidity level right. Uh, if you go to work or wherever you go, you're not there, you're not able to do that. So if you do it, yeah, you do help the plant, but if you uh, do it a lot, but not always, then basically you make the plant a little weaker, and then you're not there and it's getting really dry, then the plant is stressing out more. So I would recommend not to do it. Uh, just 
water the plant, do that right, and then uh, it can handle the humidity it has. All right. That looks like everything in this chat box. And we just hit noon o'clock. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I want to I wanna thank everyone for, uh, for attending. And uh, I'm really uh, uh, proud to show this and show the plants. And I'm really uh, excited to see uh, how people enjoy the orchids, how good care people take of it, and see the different results, because every plant is different. Uh, like we are different, plants are different as well. And uh, there's no one way to do it right. There are multiple ways. And uh, yeah, great questions today. And uh, I hope everyone continues to enjoy the orchids and the beauty of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions for you. How can they get a hold of you? Um, so through our website and I'm a and uh, the social media, uh, we can uh, answer questions. Um, I'm looking at that side because uh, uh, we have people here that uh, that they do that for for all of you. Um, so yeah, through the website Just uh, social media, we can uh, answer questions. All right. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. Everyone have a good day. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>